to be Wyatt. It has to be Wyatt. If he's the host. Hail him, hail him, Jesus the Christ. 
Good morning, members and friends of Witherspoon Street Presbyterian Church on this glorious Palm Sunday morning. Praise Him, Praise Him was our hymn of praise. My name is Karen Carter in June Bay, and we have on Reverend Lucata in June Bay, the elders and the deacons, we welcome you this morning to today's service. Let us pray. Father, Palm Sunday is here, and this past year has brought tumultuous times and flashes of fear that none of us have experienced in our lifetimes. The very real fallen state of our world have been put in front and center of our lives in a profound way. We look to you, Father, to guide us out of our fear and remind us of our Savior. We do not need to be afraid. You have given us the wisdom we need to live each day of our lives to the full purpose you have designed for us to live. This prayer in your name, Father, we humbly pray. Amen and amen. Now we will have the first reading of scripture, Luke 18, 1 through 6. Then Jesus told a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. In a certain city, there is a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, thou have no fear of God and no respect for anyone. Yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. Thank you, Kay. I like this. Our second reading of scripture comes also from the gospel according to Luke, the 19th chapter, verses 19 through 37. Let us prepare to hear the word of God on this Palm Sunday. As Jesus was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all of the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace and heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd, though, said to Jesus, Teacher! Order your disciples to stop. And Jesus answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Family, this Palm Sunday is different. Yes, it is still the, the first day of what is called Holy Week. This Palm Sunday still remains the day that marks the beginning of the last week of Jesus' physical life on earth. It still speaks to the transcendent moment when Jesus triumphantly rode on the back of a donkey down the Mount of Olives into Jerusalem in fulfillment of the prophecy from hundreds of years before. It remains as a part of our Witherspoon Street Presbyterian Church tradition, a day where after our worship service, we will still have our Palm Sunday tea. If something is different, there are no traditional palm leaves or, or leafy branches being waved throughout our beautiful sanctuary this morning from which we have been exiled now for over a year. 
We have not yet sung any of the, 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 the familiar Hosanna hymns with the, with the ritualized refrain, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Family, the message of this moment may feel muted. Muted by a quarantine. Muted by the hope of a, of a trinity of vaccinations that has seemingly replaced the hope of a savior. Muted by a global pandemic. You're muted. You've heard that before, right? You're muted. It's one of the most familiar phrases that we heard in 2020 and now continuing into 2021. Someone is talking on the Zoom platform. They are going through all the motions, but they are not being heard. They are they are passionately proclaiming what it is that they want to see, but then. You're on mute. They are talking, but they are not being heard. They are going through the motions with passion, but there's no real communication and connection that's actually being accomplished. On Zoom, there are certain security features that, the, that what is called the host can set to determine whether or not you can unmute yourself during a Zoom call. Yet more often times than not, when we remain muted, we remain muted without remembering that there are some things that we need to do. There are some buttons that we need to push in order to unmute ourselves. So if you, if you look closely even to, to, to what we, we, we read from the scripture, there seems to be something muted from this Sunday's Palm Sunday scripture that we read from the 19th chapter of the Gospel of Luke. If you look at this, there are no hosannas in this text from Luke. Hosanna is a, is a Hebrew word that, that, that is literally an exclamatory cry, a, a shout, a scream, a, a holler that means Please help me. Please save me. Please deliver me. You cannot declare Hosanna correctly without a series of exclamation points. Now, there are Hosannas in all the other Palm Sunday gospel accounts. It's in Matthew 21, in Mark 11, in John 12. Yet we hear no Hosannas in the Lucan gospel. All we have in Luke 19 is the orderly account of the usual greeting that was given by the Passover pilgrims that says, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. It's muted. Even the Pharisees and the crowd in this gospel of Luke account are trying to mute the people from crying out. They, they say to Jesus, order your disciples to stop making all that noise. Yet Jesus answers them saying, no, no, if these were silent, if these were silent, if they were muted and the expression of their pain, the petition and praise, then the stones would cry out. Family, the followers of Jesus needed to be unashamed and not worried about what anybody else had to say. Hosanna, the followers of Jesus on that phone Sunday needed to lift up their voices and declare what they needed. Hosanna, those who truly needed deliverance needed to have confidence in who Jesus was riding into Jerusalem on the back of that donkey and say, Hosanna. If you live in the reality in the age of mute, and there are times when the traditional powers and principalities call upon us to stay on mute and keep our passions in check. There are moments when we have been forced 
to be quiet. There are systems and circumstances when we and women in particular are urged to quiet it, restrain submission, yet we are to be reminded on this Palm Sunday, on this day at the beginning of the Holy Week, at the conclusion, the last Sunday of what should be a never ending Woman's History Month, that we must not be ashamed, that we must lift up our voices. We cannot hold back with the knowledge that the King of the, of the heavenly hosts, Christ Jesus has called upon their disciples to reject their right to always remain silent. So I ask that you meditate with me this morning for just a few moments on the Palm Sunday message. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Let us pray. Lord God, you are an awesome and a mighty God, and you are worthy to be praised. Hosanna, save us. Hosanna, help us. Hosanna, deliver us right now in this hour, in this moment. Let us be unashamed. Let us be not embarrassed. Let us not hold back. Let us know that even though we may not have all of the rituals and the trappings and the and the palms that we're used to seeing waving back and forth that we can still connect with you that you are still delivering right now that you are still walking alongside us and with us you will never leave us or forsake us reconnect us again in this holy week reconnect us to you in the name of jesus christ we pray together and say together amen amen Amen. As a preacher, I remember the first time I heard someone reject their right to remain silent in a worship service and scream. I remember it clearly. Okay, it was at the end of a Mother's Day sermon. I was preaching uh, in a Baptist church in Reform, Alabama. Now, I even then was a full-fledged Presbyterian. I was an active member of Brown Memorial Presbyterian Church in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, yet I was not yet allowed to preach within Presbyterian churches because I was not ordained, I was not commissioned, I hadn't even been elected to anything in the denomination, but I knew in my heart and in my soul that I was called to preach God's word. So for two years prior to ever preaching in any Presbyterian church, I preached anywhere and everywhere that the Lord led me. And I remember on that Sunday that I had I'd made my, my three sermon points and I was concluding with a planned prayerful emphasis upon Jesus' impassioned last words from the Gospel of John when the, when the dying Christ spoke to his own mother and his beloved disciple. I, I had my, my, my words ready. I was preaching like a Baptist. My flow was ready. My words were, 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 were steady. And yet seemingly out of nowhere, my sermonic flows was interrupted, disrupted by a scream. was a young woman that was sitting in the middle of the church that began to shout and scream. I was shook. This, this was not normal for me. This was not normal experience in my frozen chosenness. It was not a part of my tradition, you know, where, where I came from, my, my folks did a little amen, but that was about it. And I didn't know what was wrong. I had a sermon to finish, and she was disrupting me. I had a, I had a closing prayer to pray. I, I could see this woman who was sitting in the middle pew. She had sat in her seat throughout the service and did not
not appear as if anybody was bothering her or, or messing with her. Yet in that moment, this woman who was obviously going through some things, she was releasing her voice as I preached about Jesus's last words to his mama. She was crying out. She was persisting. She was calling on her own mama. She was calling on her own grandmama. She was calling upon her own God. And she continued, she continued, she persisted. And, and she was praising and she was saying, thank you, Jesus. And she was shouting out and crying out. And, and as she began to scream, then I began to shout. And when I began to shout, then other people began to holler. She was not even talking to me. She didn't even need my words anymore. She was talking to and with God. She needed to unmute herself. And I wasn't about to play Pharisee and say, shh. Even if I had, it wouldn't have changed anything. That woman was going to persist. Some of us know what I'm talking about here, whether you're, you're Baptist or Presbyterian or Methodist or Pentecostal. Some of us have gone through some things. We, we've lost some things in this past year. We've lost some people. We've lost some parents. We've lost some children. We've lost some spouses. We've lost them to the pandemic. We've lost them to, to disease. We've lost them to violence. We've lost people to prisons. And businesses have collapsed. Marriages have fallen apart. Job opportunities have disappeared. Healthy bodies have deteriorated. There are some churches that will never recover. We've lost some hope. People and powers that we trusted have turned on us, have lied to us, have hurt us, have used us, have abused us, have put knees on our necks and bullets in our bodies. Hell, some of us are going through it right now. We have pain right now. We need to make a petition right now. We, we, we might need to say, I need some prayer right now, Pastor, but my, but my pain is, is not well organized. My, my crises are, are not completely coordinated. That, that stimmy stimulus check still has not yet hit my account right now. And there are times when we must unashamedly reserve the right to exercise our responsibility to unmute ourselves chosen frozen hearts need to unfold and we need to talk with god we need to stop going through the the muted motions of whispering embarrassed prayers as if we are ashamed and think god will not answer the god of the heavenly host has granted us security permission in spite of the pharisaic of so many of our traditions. Family, there are times that we can find in the still small voice, we can find hope. Yes, there are ways that, that God can bless us even when we're quiet and sedate. In her book, Black womanist ethics, and, and we were so blessed yesterday to have a wonderful presentation by Sushama Austin Connor and, and Peter Paris and, and members of the Christian Education Committee. But, but in her book, Black Womanist Ethics, Reverend Dr. Katie Cannon, she, she, she taught us something where she explored the virtue of what she called unshouted courage. And the unshouted courage has, has, has evolved from, from the forced responsibility of, of Black women who are compelled to, to bear steadfastly and to silently hold it all together. And, and Dr. Cannon, who was the first Black woman to ever be ordained as a minister of the word and sacrament in our Presbyterian denomination, she, she, she talked about how this unshouted courage can indeed often serve as that unacknowledged inner conviction that keeps our hearts and our minds stayed on freedom. It has its value. 
It has its virtues, yet I submit to you this morning that there is also power and promise in the unmuted shout. There is a time and a season, yes, for everything under the sun. And I believe that on Palm Sunday, it needs to be a time where we are reminded to re-examine, to reimagine, and to reclaim our hosannas. You see, when I read Dr. Cannon, she, she also talks about a system that frequently requires women to, to quote, give careful consideration to a will that is not her own and to quote, be held accountable for many happenings that are beyond her control. And I know that there remain systems in place that push us to stay on mute Yet we can never be silenced when it comes to the authentic articulation of prayerful petition and praise. Like that persistent widow that, that Kay read about in the first reading of scripture from Luke 18, it does not matter who we bother. We are not concerned about what we might disrupt. We must persist unashamed, fully confident and hopeful that our hosannas are being heard by a sacrificing servant that loves us and has promised to save us. And on this Palm Sunday, I imagine that many of those that, that walked triumphantly alongside of Jesus as he descended down the Mount of Olives and into Jerusalem who were shushed by the Pharisees that were invested in the spoils of empire, I imagine that many of those walking were women. They were women who were exclaiming, who were shouting, who were screaming, please help me, please save me, please deliver me. These were the same women that had seen Jesus call Lazarus out of a grave, even though he had been four days dead, dead. It's the same women that had been waiting for this moment, that had been waiting through pain and struggle and difficulty and abuse for a prophecy to be fulfilled that had been spoken over 500 years earlier. We've only been going through this pandemic for a year. Can you imagine what will make you want to holler? they have the courage and the confidence that their unmuted prayers could and would be answered. There was nothing that was going to stop them. And there is nothing, there is nothing family, there is nothing with the spoon that is going to stop us. Palm leaves or just the, just the palms of my hands, I'm going to give, we're going to give God the glory in the sanctuary or in the streets. We are going to scream. We are going to shout, unmute yourself. I can't wait for God to do what God is going to do. Unmute yourself. My hosannas will be heard right now. Save me. Weeping may endure for a pandemic, but joy comes in my praise report. I have to say, stone, shut up. You are not going to praise for me. You are not going to say a word for me. You don't have to say a mumbling word. We got this. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Unmute yourself. Put some up in your disrupt. Help me, Lord. Hosanna in the highest is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Stop shushing me. Stop telling me to stop preaching like a Baptist. Stop telling me that Presbyterians don't know how to praise. We're not going back to that. We don't care if you're embarrassed. Stop telling us that the frozen chosen do not know how to pray. You only think that because you haven't joined us yet early in the morning when we come together in the name of Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit. We will not be muted. We know that sometimes when things are frozen and kept on ice, they are preserved and kept so they can be unthawed just at the right time. And we're going to have a frozen chosen. Hosanna this morning. Hallelujah. 
unmute yourself. This is the time we persist. Prayers are going to go up to God with the poems that we have. We are going to persist. We are going to keep knocking on the doors of governors in Georgia like that state legislator who was fighting for voting rights. We prayerfully persist against our opponent. We are going to stand together. We are going to stand together against hate and violence in the Asian community. We are going to stand together shoulder to shoulder with our sisters and our brothers in, in Atlanta, in Boulder, Colorado, in Princeton, New Jersey, and whenever and wherever it appears, Hosanna. No, we don't have poems this morning, but we have our poems and we lift them up to God. We lift them up in praise. God is bringing us through some things. God is bringing us to some things. And we are going to shout and scream and be unashamed. And we are going to say no longer. Will you put our sisters on mute? No longer. Will you put our, our, our wives on mute? No longer. Will you put our daughters on mute? No longer. Will you put our nieces on mute? No longer will you put our mamas on you. No longer will you put our sons and our brothers and our fathers on you. Hosanna, 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 hallelujah in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Amen. 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 Thank you for that powerful sermon, sweetheart. Um, unmute yourself. So it, it actually settled in me the information, the part that you said that we are a powerful people. We are frozen children, but we know how to pray. We know how to come together. We know how to lift our spirits to God. So amen. And remember, we are to unmute ourselves and God is always, always with us. Amen. Please listen for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now comes the part of our service where we have our offertory and our appeal. Holy God, we shout Hosanna with the crowd. Save us, we beseech thee, and somehow this chance we have to give our money is a grace of your salvation, a way to escape the self-focus that threatens to overcome our lives. So open our hearts, open our hands, accept our gifts, O oh God. Amen. I 
sympathy and our uh, uh, deep sense of loss behind the passing of our longtime member uh, Judith Ruffin who passed on March the 18th. Uh, she has been away from New Jersey for some time and she will be buried in the Arlington National Cemetery with her husband Edward and we, we ask that you remember Judith's family in your prayers and you keep them lifted up as you pray for all of those who are within our communities who are dealing with the reality and the struggle of loss. Reach out to those who are continuing to, to go through the cycles of grief behind the loss of parents and, and spouses uh, and, and loved ones and friends and family members. Let us be persistent in our prayers. You know, we can be confident that when we pray for something, and this is what that, 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 that story about the persistent widow, that parable meant. Uh, it, it said from the very beginning that the reason for this and that, the, and, and that what it is designed to teach us is about 
the, the, the importance of being continuous about the need to pray always and not to lose heart. And we have to know that our prayer lives matter. And so I am confident not only will people be comforted when we pray for that, but I know that God is answering all other kinds of prayers. I want to ask you to join your prayers with mine and that of many others as we pray for our sister, Shirley Satterfield, in this hashtag Surely Shirley campaign. We are working very hard to have the, the Princeton Middle School, formerly known as John Witherspoon Middle School, to be renamed after our sister, our mother, our friend, our deacon, our junior usher ministry leader, our advocate, our historian, our Rio Shirley Satterfield. We are asking everyone who lives in Princeton to vote, to vote by April 1st. You, you can look in your bulletin and the information has been sent out to you, but we go to the Princeton Public Schools website and we can cast our vote to rename this school after this, this, this heroine and the legacy that she represents in our community. Surely, 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 that that is who it is that this school needs to be named after, the educator who has taught and continues to teach so many of our young people in this community. And I just encourage you to do that, but also today, Today, I want you to join with me, to join with young people, to join with those from all over our community. And even though there's some rain right now, I'm going to pray against this rain in the name of Jesus. And we are going to do some canvassing today, 3 o'clock p.m. Put it down, 3 o'clock p.m. We are meeting in the front of the church at 124 Witherspoon Street Presbyterian Church. And we're going to go downtown and we're gonna hand out flyers, and we're gonna walk through the Witherspoon Jackson neighborhood, and we're gonna knock on doors and hand out flyers, and we're gonna to go to the neighborhood of, of the middle school, on Walnut Lane, and we're gonna reach people and connect with people and ask them and urge them to cast their vote. We want this to be an overwhelming victory, so it is very clear of our way forward. So I invite you at three o'clock p.m. There will be a bus that will transport people from place to place. We do have different groups who are joining us. I'm thankful in particular for, to, to, to Alex of uh, Princeton Mutual Aid that helped to put together the flyers and all of those who will be volunteering today. But with us, we need to be present. We need to be involved. It's at three o'clock. It's after the, the Palm Sunday tea, which I'm not going to talk about. Our, our sister Leslie Young from Presbyterian Women will have an announcement about that in just a moment. But I encourage you and I invite you to join with us in front of the church. We will have on our mask. We will be socially distanced. We will be safe. And we will be committed and persisting in doing what it is that we are led to do in the spirit of the Lord our God. So I invite you there. I also want to, to prepare you for some great things that are happening in Holy Week this week. As we said, Palm Sunday is the first day of Holy Week, but there are services that are being organized throughout the course of the week, and we're inviting everyone to become connected with it. We are connecting and partnering and collaborating with our, our sister Presbyterian Church, Nassau Presbyterian Church, and we are inviting everyone to join with our sisters and brothers in Nassau to participate in the Maundy Thursday service, which will be on Thursday, April the 1st at 7 o'clock p.m., as well as also if you want to participate in a Good Friday service earlier in the day at 12 noon on April 2nd. Uh, there is information in your virtual fellowship email that gets sent out every single week for you to get the links for how to join with those calls. If you are watching on YouTube or Facebook or on our website and you do not have access to that virtual fellowship email, please put your information in the chat and we will make sure that it gets emailed to you so you have the opportunity to join. On Friday night, on, on the Friday that we call good, on Good Friday, April the 2nd at 6 p.m., I want to invite you to join with us for a seven last word service, and I'm doing it in partnership with, with my, my, my brothers, with my sisters, with my friends, so many of my best friends in ministry and best friends from seminary. It is being hosted by, yes, the Morning Star Missionary Baptist Church, and there will be seven different sermons, seven last words of Christ. I am one of the preachers. I am preaching the fifth word from the Gospel of John, I thirst, and I invite you to check out your bulletin, to check out your virtual fellowship, 
to join with this and to see the, 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 the women and the men of God come together in what has become a sacred part of the African-American Good Friday church tradition where we preach the seven last words of Christ, the seven last phrases of Christ as he was being crucified. So I invite you on Friday, April the 2nd, 6 p.m., Morning Star Missionary Baptist Church. I am so thankful for the invitation of my best friend, not just in ministry, my best friend, period, Reverend Earl Jones, Jr., who is the pastor of Morning Star Missionary Baptist Church in New York. And we are excited about the opportunity to connect and to proclaim the word of God. I ask that you, that you join with this. I already mentioned that last week we had a phenomenal program but I want to thank again the, 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 the leaders of the Christian Education Committee to thank our new member, uh, uh, Sushama Austin Connor, and to, it was so great to be reconnected with our beloved Dr. Peter Paris and, and, and Adrian as we reflected upon the life of, of Reverend Dr. Katie Cannon, one of our preeminent, if not the preeminent, Black womanist theologian who is the first woman who was ordained in the Presbyterian Church as a minister of the word and sacrament as a teaching elder, and we have only just begun. We have only just begun to explore her life and her legacy, but I'm thankful to Michelle Peel and all of those, Barbara Flight and those on the Christian Education Committee that persisted. You know, we've been trying to do this program, uh, Dr. Cannon, uh, a transition from labor to reward back in October of 2018 and, and they have persisted, but because of pandemic and all of the other shifts and changes that we've had, we've had to reschedule and reschedule, but I'm so thankful that it came right on time. I want to invite you to pay attention and look in your bulletin for all of the activities that are being associated with the Paul Robeson House of Princeton. We are coming up on the, on the celebration of his birthday on, 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 on this week. Paul Robeson, not, not this week, I'm sorry, on, on next week, uh, as we go from a, a wide range of activities in the celebration of the 123rd anniversary of his birth. There'll be a combination of virtual and live events on April the 4th through the 9th, which includes a football toss and hunt in Palmer Square. On, on Easter Sunday, April the 4th, from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock, the, the public library is going to host a Robeson-themed virtual story time for young people on Tuesday, April the 6th. There'll be a short video featuring our, our Rosen House board members and friends that's going to premiere on our YouTube channel on, on Thursday, April the 8th. And the highlight of this year's celebration will be once again a memorial read lane ceremony. And we'll be doing it this year at the Robeson Bust uh, in front of the Arts Council on Friday, April 9th at 12 o'clock noon. And Mayor Mark Frieda will present a proclamation that's going to designate April the 9th as Paul Robeson Day in Princeton. And our celebration is going to end with a tour of the Robeson sites in the Witherspoon Jackson neighborhood that will, of course, be led by our historian, our beloved historian, Shirley Satterfield. We're going to wear masks. We will have social distancing. And we encourage everyone to get connected because there is so much happening in the Holy Week that is yet to come in the in the Easter week that comes after Easter. And even though we are separated from certain traditions and that which is normal, we are staying connected with our palms lifted up. We are staying connected to the spirit of the Lord our God. I want to thank everyone who wished Kay and I a happy anniversary last week. Our beautiful picture is in the bulletin this week. And we are so thankful to be able to be celebrating 12 years of, of, of marriage. We, we say happy birthday to all of those who have celebrated birthdays in the, in the month of March to, to, to Joy Christmas, who I think turned 12, uh, to uh, Tom Espenshade, who was older than 12, uh, Debbie Evans and Todd Evans, Makai and Miles Hall, who turned 18, uh, Carrie Hansen, Rupert, uh, Tony Hawes, Nia McCullen, uh, Etienne Ingua, Talitha Kumi, Alua Femi also had a birthday this month. Michelle Peel, Cameron Stout, uh, Nina Tillman, Mira Ewan, and the anniversaries not only uh, of Kay and I, but of, of Patricia Fernandez Kelly and Alejandro Portis. We give thanks for all of you and the blessings of this day. Keep us lifted up in prayer. Let us persist in all that we do. And I want to invite 
uh, before I give our closing prayer, I want to invite our sister representing the Presbyterian women, representing Joan Tomlin, the moderator of our Presbyterian women, who we are still lifting up in prayer. I was able to talk with her. She is in recovery uh, and she is back home. So we keep her lifted up. But to talk to you about today, all the stuff I said that, that lies ahead at three o'clock today and beyond, that even before that, at 12 noon, we have a very special program that is a part of our tradition, the Palm Sunday Tea, and to talk a little bit about that and some of the work of the Presbyterian women, I invite our sister, your sister, Leslie Young, Deacon Leslie Young, to come and to give us a word about what lies ahead of us. Thank you, Pastor. It's my pleasure to present this message from Joan Tomlin, moderator of Witherspoon Street Church, Presbyterian Women's Committee. Good morning. This is God's word for this day and it's blessing. This is the last week in Women's History Month. The Witherspoon Street Presbyterian Church, Presbyterian Women Committee was originally called the Women's Association. It likely evolved from one of its two ladies society of the Presbyterian Church in the 1940s or 1950s, according to Shirley Satterfield, historian of Witherspoon. The Presbyterian Women's Committee of the Witherspoon Street Church has worked for decades sharing the talents, skills, and ideas of its members. Its mission is to serve the community at home and abroad. It donates to Women's Space and Lease Coin, is the host of the fundraiser activity Harvest Bazaar, and projects such as back to school and clothing projects were donated by the committee. The Presbyterian women also donate to the Presbyterian Thank Offering Mission. We recently commit, completed a wonderful celebration of the gifts of women. We give thanks to our Witherspoon technology team and to our wonderful talented people who presented song and music, Lizette Gonzalez Sosa and Michael Ginton, Ginton for providing, and Karen Jones for, for provi providing amazing music. Our work cannot be accomplished, however, without all congregation members working in concert. We thank you for your support for this ministry and ask if you have not already done so, please consider making a $25 donation online or by sending a check to the office to assist with various ministries and projects. Today, we celebrate the annual Palm Sunday Tea directed by the chairperson person of the committee, Rebecca Campbell. All donations for the Palm Sunday Tea will be given to the Maker's Place in Trenton, a nonprofit organization to, to provide families with chil children in diapers. Please join us at 12 o'clock today. The link is in the bulletin um, for the Palm Sunday Tea. We continue to thank God for his blessing. It's our message from John, Joan Tomlin, moderator. Thank you. Amen. Amen. At the end of this Women's History Month, I say our never ending Women's History Month, we give thanks for the gifts of women. We give thanks for the Presbyterian women. We give thanks for our traditions that encourage us to persist. Let us pray together. Lord God, bless us on this Palm Sunday. Guide us and lead us into this holy week and Speak to us and through us in the midst of all that it is that we are experiencing. Let us re-examine, let us remember the power and the importance of our hosannas. That we can still call upon you and you are a God that still answers prayer. You are a God that is still keeping promises, dear Lord. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Sundiata Koli, dear Lord. I pray that you touch him, mind, body, and spirit, dear Lord. I, I pray that you begin to turn the key that will open the lock that will set him free and bring him home to his, his daughters and his grandchildren and his community, dear Lord. I pray for all of our 
brothers and all of our sisters in the Edna Mahan Correctional Facility, dear Lord, that are that are struggling right now, that are suffering right now, that have been uh, abused right now. I say, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Save them, deliver them, rescue them, dear Lord. I pray for my Asian sisters and brothers, dear Lord. I, I pray for, for those who are being abused and trafficked and violated. I pray for those families and communities that were simply seeking to go through their day in Boulder, Colorado, dear Lord. I say, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Save them, deliver them, help them, dear Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray for the family of Judith Ruffin. I, I, I pray for all of those who loved her. I pray for my brother, Ben Colbert, at the loss of his brothers, dear Lord, that you comfort him, that you be with him. I pray for Vicki Mizell on the loss of her brother, dear Lord. I pray for Jamie Escarpetta in the transition of his mother, dear Lord. I, I pray for all of those who are in recovery, dear Lord. I pray for Elaine Walker Marsh, dear Lord. I, I pray for those who need you, who are calling upon you, those who have lost pets, those who have lost family members, those who have lost those that are sources of their love and their affection. I pray for those who are dealing with loneliness right now, dear Lord. I say, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, dear Lord. I pray for our former pastor, Reverend, Reverend Muriel Burroughs, and I pray for her family, dear Lord. I, I pray for, for those who are going through transitions. I, I pray for Lucille Autry Clark, the mother of Lavetta Hall, the grandmother of Miles and Micaiah, in the name of Jesus. I pray that you bless her. I, I pray that you, you bring about blessing and recovery for for, for, for Joan Tomlin, dear Lord, for those who are coming out of the hospital, who are coming out of surgeries, I pray for Talitha Kumi Alua Femi, dear Lord, that you bless her, that you keep her. I, I pray for my wife, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you be with her, that you remove anxiety and fear and doubt, dear Lord, and that you remind her that she belongs to you and that she can cry out, Hosanna, help me, Hosanna, deliver me, Hosanna, free me, Hosanna, heal me. Hosanna, you are available still right now, dear Lord. Right now in the middle of this holy week, dear Lord, we remember to remember. Remember Ramona Sosa. We remember the, 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 the family of, 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 of the Moors as they prepare for a memorial of, of, of Joe Moore later in the, in, the, in the month of April, dear Lord. We, we pray for those who are reaching for you, who are still feeling, who are going through a first Easter without the one that made their day. Let them be connected to the one that makes our lives and gives it meaning. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. I don't have palms waving, but I have a palm reaching. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, glory be to God in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, glory be the one that comes in the name of the Lord. Let all the people of God say together, Amen, Amen, Amen. Amen. Um, before I give this ending him, I would just like to say that I truly miss seeing everyone at church it has been a, a long period, and I cannot wait until we can go back into the sanctuary. But if you are beside someone right now, um, I miss being able to greet everyone and give a hug on our passing of the peace. So if you are with someone, just turn to them, please, right now, and just give them a hug and just pretend like we are at the passing of the peace really quickly. And if you're by yourself, just give yourselves a hug. Just, just give yourself a holy hug. and. And just squeeze and just know that we are going to be back in our sanctuary very soon. I miss you all. I think of you all quite often. And just know that that I love you and I cannot wait to see you again. And I hope that you did. You did as I requested and gave yourself a hug and just know that we are with you. So let's move to the end of our service. The sending hymn is I am going to live so God can use me. And the post salute is stand up, stand up for Jesus. Amen. I'm going to live so. God can use me 
anytime and anywhere I'm gonna live so God can use me anytime and anywhere I'm gonna pray so God can use me anytime and anywhere I'm gonna pray so God can use me anytime and anywhere I'm gonna give so God can use me anytime and anywhere I'm gonna give so God can use me anytime and anywhere and I'm gonna love so God can use me anytime and anywhere well I'm gonna love so God can use me anytime and anywhere Anytime and anywhere, anytime and anywhere. We are going to live, we are going to pray, we are going to sing, we are going to love. We are going to shout, scream, and holler so that God can use us. Holler at your people today as you holler at God today. Forgot to mention, I'm lifting up our, our sister, our clerk of session, Sharon Campbell, this morning, who is in recovery from her second dose of the, of the vaccination shot that she received. But we know that God is with her and that we know that God's hands are upon her right now. But family, let us go forward, go forward into our Palm Sunday tea, go forward into our mobilization for, for Shirley, Shirley Satterfield as the new name of the, of the Princeton Middle School. As we move forward today into this Holy Week to Maundy Thursday to Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday, the next time we see each other, we will be celebrating the resurrection of the Lord our God. May God be with you, Hosanna. May God continue to bless you, Hosanna. May God continue to lead you and guide you and use you anytime and anywhere. Amen, amen, and amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken, so let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church. church say
Amen. Amen. Unmute yourself. Good morning. 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 Good